Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. It is tag time. Once again, I'm Pastor Carol here with you, ready to bring the word that God has for me and for you, for us to share so we can continue to grow and do what God has for us to do. Before we get into it, we're talking about thankfulness again like we did last time. And I'm just thankful that you're here watching this video, listening to the word of God, allowing God to speak to your heart as he speaks to mine. And uh, we're just taking an opportunity for God to show us what he wants us to see. And when we open ourselves up to him, he's going to constantly fill us with his goodness. He's going to answer our questions. He's going to make his ways known to us. And we're going to be able to get the great benefits that he has for us. So keep watching, keep listening. God has something great for you today. So what we're going to talk about today is called the thanks fountain. A thanks fountain. If you think about a fountain, you have the thing in the water, shoots the water all up in the air. That's a fountain. I'm going to talk about you and I today being a thanks fountain. So where we're constantly shooting up thanks, constantly going up and coming out and coming back down. It should be thanks coming out of our mouth. So we just recently, a couple weeks ago, a week and a half ago, celebrated Thanksgiving. And that's the time we really focus on and set aside to be thankful to God as an American tradition that was started, you know, some time back. And, uh, and it's a great opportunity for us to do what God has for us to do, because as we look in his word, he also tells us that we're supposed to be thankful. And so we want to talk just a little bit more about that. And then we'll next week start to finish up this year. Can you believe it? 2020 is almost done. I know a whole lot of people are like happy and excited about that. Uh, but 2020 is almost done. We're in the last month of the year and uh, the calendar is going to be turning over very, very soon. So I just want to look at a few scriptures as we go through. And uh, again, God is going to speak to us. First thing we're going to look at, though, is complaining. Now, I have a question. How much do you think in a day or in a week? How much do you think you complain? Hmm. Now, a complaint is any time that we're expressing a frustration about something or any time we're talking about something that is different than the way we want it to be. And so I don't know you 100 percent, but I know me pretty well. And I know that it's very easy to complain. And I imagine it's that it's super easy for me to complain that it's also super easy for you to complain. Let's think for a second about what kind of stuff we complain about. Hmm. What about when we say things like, oh, what are they doing? Oh, why do I have to do that? I don't want to. This is so dumb. Why is this taking so long? Why are they always talking smack? Who is that? Why are they talking to me like that? Why do I have to clean my room? Eh, mm, uh. You see, you get the picture. See how easy it is to start to complain about whatever is going on. Sometimes I complain when I go to the fast food place. And I'm like, wow, this fast food isn't very fast. Or, you know, how come I asked and ordered this and you gave me that? Why do I have to go in there and get stuff fixed? It's very easy to complain. And it seems like there are a lot of things to complain about. But what I want to do is draw your attention to the opposite of that. We have complaining on one side, but conversely, we have Thanksgiving. And the, the short moral of the story today is that if we focus more on thanksgiving than complaining, we can enjoy our lives more, even though it's the same life. So think about it just for a second. Are you more happy when you're expressing a complaint about something, or, or are you more happy, happier, when you're expressing thanksgiving? This even works when you're in the middle of a messed up situation. This even works while you're dealing with something that may come out as a complaint. While I'm waiting for my order to get fixed and while I'm waiting for things to be made right, I could be thinking, I'm just thankful that I have the money to pay for this food. I'm thankful that I'm in, the, in a country where we have fast food places all over because I've been to countries where that's not the case and I know of other countries where it's even less so than the countries that I've been in. So I can be thankful in the midst 
of dealing with difficulty. You could also be thankful in the midst of tragedy. Sometimes in this life, we go through things that are very rough, very hard, difficult, sad, messed up, no good, things like that. But you know what? Even in those times, we can be thankful. And the more thankful we can be, especially at those times, the less the difficulty will sting. Because while we might be sad or upset or complaining about losing someone, we could also be thankful that we had them to begin with. Sometimes we can complain about our parents or their situation or whether or not a parent is in our life because they have left or whether they're alive or whether whatever is going on. But we could also be thankful while uh, while dealing with the thing that's not the way that it's supposed to be. We can also be thankful for the things that are the way they're supposed to be. It's very important for us to remember when we lose someone, it's important for us to think about the time that we had with that person and not to be consumed with the loss. And that can be very, very difficult, but it can help. So I want to look first in Colossians chapter 2. I mean, it's very easy to see that, you know, we probably complain more than we're thankful. And that's what we want to change today. That's what we want to turn around. So one part of it is going to be uh, complaining less. But what I really want to talk about is being thankful more. So I want to look in Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to focus on verse number. We're going to start on verse number 6. Now I'm going to read from the King James Version of the Bible which I think is the best overall. You read from wherever it is that you have. You can turn, you can swipe, you can flip, whatever it is that you have to do while we're doing online. Colossians chapter 2, look at verse 6. It says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. One thing that we can be constantly thankful for is that we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If you have, if you haven't, let me know. We will walk you through that because you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus died for you. He took the payment, the cost of your sins. He took that and paid that for you. and He loves you. But once we've received Christ, wow, we're supposed to be thankful and walking or living our lives from that vantage point. So he died for us, so we can be thankful that he died for us. We can be thankful that his love is still commended toward us. We can be thankful that the Bible says each and every day, God's mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Man, it's difficult uh, for person-to-person relationships to have new mercies every day. When we deal with our own relationships and we deal with people back and forth, man, sometimes we wake up in the morning thinking about how somebody messed up the day before. We don't automatically extend new mercies to each other every day, but God does. And so, since we've received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can walk in Him, we can be thankful for who He is, and what He's done, and how great He is for us. So, one thing that we can do to be thankful is, I want you to just start thinking about your day. Before we do that, we're going to think about how we can be thankful. But have you ever seen someone who is overflowing or a fountain of jealousy? Maybe they're jealous of what another person has or gets to do. Have you ever seen a fountain of hate constantly talking about how much hate there is and how much hate they experience and and why everything and everybody is hateful, hate, hate, hate? They can be just fountains overflowing with hate. We've also had fountains of just wickedness. People talking about evil things or wrongdoings. Just constantly talking about uh, depriving other people of their rights or their property. Robbing, stealing, doing whatever it is that they want to do. Just constant fountains of evil. We've seen those. Hopefully we haven't been those. But the point is from this day forward that we should be a fountain of thanksgivingness. Thanksgiving. So how do we become a fountain of Thanksgiving? How do we become that fountain shooting up Thanksgiving all the time? Well, the first thing you have to do is try. We have to attempt. We have to want to do. We have to try to do it. And if we try, 
we will succeed. We can succeed in that. So if we want to be a thankful fountain, a thanks fountain, then we just need to be more thankful than we are. Like I said earlier, yes, we want to complain less. But what I really want you to focus on is being thankful more. The more we're thankful, I believe that it'll be a, a little bit automatically, it'll help us be less uh, complaining. So we have to give it a try. We have to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to try and be more thankful. Uh, I'm going to try and have Thanksgiving on my mind. So one way we can overflow with Thanksgiving is to be thankful for the little things. All right. If I stop and ask you to give me a list of 10 things that you're thankful for today, not that you're thankful for that happened in the past, they could have started in the past and are still repeating, but 10 things that you're thankful for that you can be thankful for right now, not the thing that happened before. Give me 10. Now, if we were in person, I'd wait a second to ask you, but it'll be really weird if we do that right now in video. But I want you to take a break, maybe pause it, do that 10 things right now, ready, set, go. All right, how long did it take you to do what you were supposed to do? I hope you have your list of 10. We can be thankful for the little things like the fact that we got up today. We're still alive. We're still breathing. Stuff could be all jacked up, but because we're alive right now, we have an opportunity to change that around. And we can be thankful. No, we're not thankful for having a situation to turn around, but we can be thankful that we have the power, the ability to change those things around. We can be thankful that we're breathing clean air. We can be thankful that uh, we're still in the country that we're in and we're in the system that we're in and things are good. We can be thankful that we have running water and that we don't have to grab a bucket and go down to the lake or something. Or we can be thankful that we have clean water like all over the place. And we're not drinking water that's carrying diseases, as many are to this day. In 2020, almost 2021, there's still people in the world that don't have daily easy access to clean water. But you do. You can be thankful for that. And the more thankful for we are for little things, the easier it will be to not complain about other things. The other thing that we can do to be a thanks fountain, a thanks fountain, is to make sure that we include Thanksgiving in our prayer life. All right. Don't let your prayer or your prayer life only be the time when you're complaining to God or when you're asking for stuff. Try and tell my kids that, you know, we don't just go around asking for stuff. And every time that we interact with each other, it shouldn't be them asking me for something. That's a really messed up relationship. And so we shouldn't have that relationship with God. When do you pray? Do you pray when you need something? I pray a lot when I need to find something. Uh, I, I pray over my food. Those are asking God to do some things. Some people always pray at the end of the day and or the beginning of the day. Some people have prayer times. But think about when you pray. What are you normally doing when you pray? Are you just spending time with God? We talked about prayer not long ago. Are you just spending time with God, talking to him about your life, asking him questions or whatever? Or, like most of us normally do, are we asking for something? The time we pray is like the time when we need something. Lord, uh, can you, you know, asking you to bless me with this, help me with that. Do this for them or do this for that. Thankfulness should be a part of our prayer. And so when we go to the Lord and if you look at the disciples' prayer, there was thanksgiving to God in there. We want to give thanks and always include thanks and thanksgiving in our prayer. Father, I'm thankful for who you are, all that you continue to do. I thank, I'm thankful that you love me. And then we can go into the needs that we have or whatever it is that we're doing at that time of prayer. I just want to look at another scripture briefly, not far away. It's in Ephesians chapter 5. It's not far away, so it's still in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 20 says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be giving thanks always, constantly giving thanks for all things unto God. Now, we're not thankful because this bad situation, the bad things happen, but we always have something to be thankful for. And so if we can continue to focus on being a prayer a thankful fountain, if we can focus on making thankful, thanksgiving, Part of our prayer life and we can decide to be more thankful we will be on a way to
to being a thanks fountain. You and I can be thanks fountains when we put our mind to it and we allow God to share with us how we're supposed to live. So that's all I'm saying today, my friend. Don't be a complaint fountain. Don't be a worry wart or a person who's always talking about negative things. Become that thanks fountain where you allow God to hear the expression of all the great things that he's done for you. That's what I'm working on. I hope you'll work on it too. Until next time, my friends, until I see you in person, which I hope is very soon, God bless you. We'll see you. Tag, you're it.